Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel here at the International Center in St. Louis. The Texas Romans chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. The Reverend Dr. Matthew Harrison is preaching. The broadcast is underwritten by the LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 A reading from Romans chapter 5. God shows his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Jameson, welcome. As you walk down Koligenstrasse in Wittenberg, you come to the Leukeria. Uh, the old place where Luther was a university professor and where he lectured. And there's an entrance there to go back into the square of the Leucaria. And there, above the entrance it says, Hodie mihi cras tibi. And there's a skull, I think, on the, the threshold. Today it's me, tomorrow it's you. Today I die. Tomorrow you die. It wasn't original to that spot. It had actually been over on Johann Quenstedt's house, I believe, on the Market Square. But it's very fitting that it was moved there. In a world where our universities, our state universities, and so many of our church-related universities have forgotten to ask the serious question, or simply have no belief in any afterlife, no belief in any fundamental truths. Hodie mihi cras tibi. That's the question our Concordia has put to every single student. What is the meaning of life? What shall I do with my life in light of that meaning of life? Who am I before God? Who am I before my neighbor? What shall my vocations be in this life that I may live a meaningful life, a life quorum Deo, a life before God as his own? As we remember that, it makes all the challenges, and I could list a few, and we all could, all of us in this endeavor, We could start way back when and list along, and the challenges continue coming. But it means this endeavor is worthwhile. And we have a beautiful message. God chose his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, having been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were sinners, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. This text teaches objective justification. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There is a justification of the world. Christ is put to death for our transgression and raised for our justification. The deed is done. The most important event in the history of the world, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, is done. It's a done deal. We don't have to gin students up, whip them into emotional frenzies, and have, have uh, some kind of uh, uh, rallies to uh, get them to accept Jesus in some emotional bent. We have a message to say. I tell you, you are a sinner, just like me and all the rest of us. And the hard part's over, my friend. Jesus is for you. 
your sins are forgiven. That's what drives us around here. Yes, we operate in two kingdoms. We got to have strict legal protocol. We got to operate with the law in the left-hand kingdom, managing everything, including students. But we're driven moreover by the gospel. We're on about forgiveness. And this ironically is the most precious thing that students need today. We live in the age of the martyrdom of the conscience. I have noted many times that the Book of Concord contains the word conscience some 400 times. That's every other page. And then if you add all the other cognate words like consolation and trust and uh, alleviation of a doubt and those kind of things, it fills our Book of Concord. The world has lied to our young people, continues to lie. Perhaps you saw Elon Musk's interview about his own child. The world continues to lie. Conscience is our burden. Confusion reigns. And we have a message. You are worth the blood of Jesus. God the Father has created you. God the Son has redeemed you. And here, the gospel is yours. The Spirit sanctifies you right now. The Reformation was born at the university. Luther was and remained a university prof all his life. It was a young university, started 522 years ago this July. As you walk in that entrance to Wittenberg, you see a square with all of the Central European universities and their founding dates, Prague, 1200-something, the last being Wittenberg. The university was connected to the church from the beginning, an outpouring of the church. Also, the university was deeply connected to the Christian state. The university came about when students in France and elsewhere began to study around teachers and then politicians or free cities uh, loaned money or gave up money for the effort to bring in more. And then you had administration. You had the growth of the university and the study of what matters in life. Philosophy, history, language, poetry, medicine, law, grammar, logic, rhetoric. Colleges were associated with universities and grew into schools and schools that gave doctors degrees. Dialectic, natural philosophy, metaphysics, math, astronomy, humanities, everything that we who champion the liberal arts say, this is important to know for what it is to be a creature of God, to be human, to be Christ's own, to be God's creation in this world, to live a purposeful life over against God and my neighbor. And Walter had a similar vision. You know, he founded Concordia or he, I think it's when they set the cornerstone for the 1850 building down by Concordia Publishing House. He envisioned a university. He did not just envision a pray to -gar seminar. He envisioned a university. Now, there have been many times throughout history where Lutheran history, where Prediger Sem preacher seminaries were separate from the university or teachers from, for certain reasons, religious conflict, everything else. And there have been a lot of times, of course, universities have always been associated with the state, Christian universities, and that's brought all kinds of benefits and all kinds of problems. Welcome to today. It brings all kinds of benefits. It brings, brings all kinds of problems. It's never been the case that we haven't had as Lutheran universities to stand up against the state and say, this far and no far. We just won a case in Oregon with the Supreme Court saying that basically the Missouri Senate has a right to, for its schools to operate according to the First Amendment, the free exercise of religion. And we'll continue to fight those cases. We have these universities for our own, and we have them for our world. We have them for our church workers. 
I've never been prouder of the theology taught at all of our universities. Now is a golden moment. We're blessed. Now is the golden moment. I'm proud to have a child who graduated from a Concordia University and was taught the great books. I'm proud of what's going on at our universities and thankful. And you are too, Jameson, aren't you? You will be an indefatigable supporter of these universities. Everybody else has brought their gifts to the table. Now you bring yours. The one thing I didn't like to see with you moving this position is you've been such a good district president. Far better than I would have thought. <laughs> And now you'll bring your gifts to this position at this crucial moment. Oh, challenges, we know them. I can list them all on the top ones, and I can hear people muttering at home right now. But now's the moment. It's a good moment. It's a great moment. We have exactly what the world needs today. Hodie mihi cross tibi. The world needs what we have in our schools. Purpose, Christ, vocation, Christ, service, Christ, meaning, Christ, with a beautiful, clear conscience of sinners forgiven. God grant your tenure and the tenure of all of you who serve our universities to be blessed and blessed again and again. We pray it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about long and short-term opportunities to serve, visit servenow.lcms.org.